Hello and welcome back to the Survival Horror Guide, a series where we play and then review survival horror games. We rate them on their fear factor, and we give them an overall score. Finally, we send it over to the series' totally arbitrary rating system to see how it stacks up against the rest of the survival horror competition. Today for the show, we are checking out a classic horror game from the PS2 generation. We're checking out Fatal Frame. It looks old. I wonder if it's a key to some door. Ah! You bastard, get out of here! The original Fatal Frame released back in 2003 here in North America on PS2 and the original Xbox. During this era, these were popular games. There was a trilogy released back on the PS2, but then after that, the series kind of just fizzled out, fizzled into obscurity. Its next couple games were exclusive to Nintendo consoles and didn't even get proper retail releases in North America. The fourth game, Mask of the Lunar Eclipse, wasn't even released outside of Japan. It's a goddamn shame. A lot of people consider the second game, Fatal Frame 2 Crimson Butterfly, to be amongst the best that the genre has to offer. Oh no, she's munching on my cooch! This is a series whose potential was sadly just never realized. And one thing that I've always appreciated about Fatal Frame is that, you know, if you think about it, the other mainstay survival horror games at the time, Resident Evil, Silent Hill, they're Japanese-made horror games that depict Western culture, and are inspired by Western horror movies, etc. But the Fatal Frame series leans heavily on its Japanese roots, which I love. Because of that, it has such a distinct flavor compared to other games in the genre. The game even states that it's based on a true story. And while it most certainly isn't, I even made a separate video on that matter, it definitely has many ghosts and designs that are seemingly pulled straight out of Japanese horror films and Japanese folklore. It's awesome. And it's scary as shit. They got to his ass? Oh! The game starts off with our protagonist, Miku, arriving at the abandoned Humuro mansion after her brother went missing two weeks earlier. Here she uncovers the mansion's dark history and the bizarre rituals held by the Humuro family. And it just so happens that deep under the mansion lies a gateway to hell. Fantastic. Not to mention the entire place is now being haunted by the spirits of the Himuro family, most notably Kyrie, the Rope Shrine Maiden. I actually ended up getting pretty invested in the game's story. It was really interesting to learn about the family's history, why and how these rituals were performed, and how the hell things got the way they were. Miku, our character, is literally the least important part of the game's narrative. She really is just like the vessel for the player, our eyes and ears. And like, you know, why the hell she showed up to this place solo in the middle of the night? <laughs> I will never know. She can literally leave at any time. Nothing is keeping her there. I'd go get some backup or something, but you know, what would the fun be in that? Ah! Oh, I took damage. Oh God. Of course, this game's main hook is the unique combat. You can't exactly shoot a ghost with bullets, so instead, the players are armed with a camera. The Camera Obscura. In fact, the game uses the camera for lots of things. Unlocking doors, hints on where to go next, bonus points from non-combat ghost encounters, it's awesome. You're using it constantly. I really enjoyed the scenarios where, like, a door is being held shut by a talisman that can only be broken by finding the location that it shows you on the camera. Then it's like, oh, I remember that place. It takes the monotonous practice of finding a key to unlock a door, something commonplace in survival horror games, and turns it into something kind of fun. As for the combat, it definitely takes some getting used to. It is time to do battle, dude. Oh no! She got me, this fucking bitch. For one, the analog sticks are backwards. In 2020, it's standard to have the left joystick control the player's movement, while the right stick handles the camera. In Fatal Frame, the game switches to first person when you bring out the camera, and yeah, it's backwards, which can be a bit disorienting. It's nearly 20 years old, so you gotta cut it some slack, and you will adapt eventually to it for sure, but as a whole, I definitely feel like the idea of the combat was better than the actual execution. You're losing points on the survival horror guide, I'm gonna tell you that right now. <laughs> this style of fight is not fun. Sometimes it's great. It's a mix of keeping your camera focused on the target, to build up your meter to dish out even more damage, plus you can time your shot to deal bonus critical damage in what's called zero shots. Plus each ghost type has different patterns and behaviors to learn. You can upgrade your camera in different ways, equip certain abilities that can freeze ghosts in place or push them back to create some space. Lots of good stuff here, but there was definitely a few encounters that were super frustrating that usually had to do with the environment. There were some fights where ghosts would be simply 
hidden in walls so you can't do any damage to them, which would result in a lot of cheap moments where you get hit and there's not really much you can do about it. And the damage that this game dishes out is often insane. I can't waste any shots, dude. All of these shots... What? Holy fuck the damage! The game definitely hits a huge spike in difficulty in the last couple of hours. And maybe that's just a me problem. Something that was definitely a me problem during my playthrough is I didn't discover until way later in the game that you can reload Type 14 film at save points for free. Sure, it's the cheapest and weakest film in the game, but, you know, at least it's film. <laughs> I had no idea you could do this until I was almost finished the game, which resulted in me scraping by with barely any film during most of my playthrough, often finishing ghost encounters with barely any shots left, or sometimes there's a period where I straight up had no ammo, no film whatsoever. I kept saying during my playthrough, damn, they're really stingy with this goddamn film. <laughs> I couldn't believe it, especially because, as I said, you're using your camera for basically everything. I made the game way harder on myself, so PSA for people who are playing, you can reload your film at save points. Let's go, bitch. Oh, she's fast! But honestly, now that I've finished the game, my biggest takeaway is, damn, why isn't this series popular anymore? There's so much potential here. And because of some poor decisions like having the last game released exclusively on Wii U, digital only, I wouldn't expect to see a new entry in the series anytime soon. Which is a goddamn travesty. On the Fear Factor scale, this game is an 8. I personally always found Asian horror to be terrifying. With a haunting story, creepy atmosphere, and creepy ghost designs, this game is the real deal, and laid the groundwork for the exceptional Fatal Frame 2. Overall, this game is an 8.5. I was engaged from beginning to end. This game really had good pacing. The combat was fun most of the time. The notes and the audio logs found around the mansion built upon the interesting story and lore. The game leverages the camera in cool and unique ways, plus it's simply different than a lot of other games in the genre, which is a huge plus for me. Now taking it over to the series' totally arbitrary rating system, Fatal Frame is going to slide in at number 4, above RE3 Remake, but not quite enough to crack the top 3. If you guys want to check out my full playthrough of Fatal Frame, then you should definitely check out the Let's Play channel for all my horror game playthroughs and all kinds of other random stuff. Thanks so much for watching this episode of the Survival Horror Guide. As always, please let me know what you thought about it, and hit the like button if you enjoyed it. It does help me out a lot. Thanks for watching this one, guys. Peace!